you like Raspberry Pi? Because in today's video, we're going to be talking about setting up a Raspberry Pi. If you've never done this before, it's extremely easy. And maybe you don't even know what a Raspberry Pi is. So let's talk about that. To break it down as simple as we possibly can, a Raspberry Pi is simply a small form factor computer. Raspberry Pis typically will run some form of a Linux operating system. However, you can run other operating systems on a Raspberry Pi, but you are very limited as to the power that these things actually have. They aren't beefed up with a ton of power or a ton of RAM. However, they do serve many different purposes and you will find these out in the real world being used for specific use case scenarios. Now you could consider a Raspberry Pi some form of IoT device for sure because they are utilized in many IoT uh, scenarios, environments, projects, and things like that. There are also a ton of fun projects that you can do with a Raspberry Pi and that's where you're coming into play. What do you guys wanna see me do with this Raspberry Pi once we build it? Here's a list of a ton of projects. We'll put the links in the description below. There's everything that we could choose from. There's a lot of cool stuff that you could do with these. And these are a great little tool that you can purchase for really, really cheap that can act as a secondary computer for you so that you can start building your Linux skills, start building your virtualization skills, your coding skills. There's literally so many different things that you could utilize a Raspberry Pi for. So what are you going to use your Raspberry Pis for? That's my question. Again, another question. What are you gonna do with them? And for those of you trying to break into the IT field, this is a great 100-ish dollar investment that you can make to, again, act as that secondary computer for you so that you can start building some more real world skills. Again, there's so much you could do with these things. So definitely check one of these out and purchase it if you can, because it's definitely going to help add value to your skill set with the endless possibilities of things that you can do with this. So let's go into actually putting this thing together. Before I go any further, I wanna just mention how important it is to get hands-on experience like putting together a Raspberry Pi, as simple as that can be. And if you wanna get more hands-on experience and you're trying to break into the IT field or take your career to the next level, please check out NextGenT. They are sponsoring this video and I do greatly appreciate the work that they're doing over there. At NextGenT, we really focus on building hands-on experience for our students. So if that's something you're interested in, make sure you check out the link in the description below. Let's get into this video. All right, so the first thing we need to do is bust this bad boy open. Open here. And in our case, first thing we have is the premium case for the Raspberry Pi. Let's go ahead and just open this up. So you guys can see this. And this top piece right here, this piece, this actually just comes right off just like that. Now on top of our Raspberry Pi 3 box, we have our uh, heat sinks. These are right here. So we can leave those just on the box so we know where they're at. We don't wanna lose those, we need those. And if we open up the box, we're gonna have our handy dandy little motherboard. Right, this is just a little motherboard inside this bag right here. I'll take that out. There you go. Look at that. This right here is the entire computer, essentially, right? This is the motherboard with everything on it that we need. Look at, there's our little cute processor right there. It's so cute and adorable. Now, of course, we have our USB ports on here. We have our Ethernet port. We have power. We have HDMI. And then we have the um, micro um, uh, USB cable here. So uh, we'll get into all the details of this. We'll set this one to the side. Is there anything in here that we need? I don't think we need that, but we'll set that to the side as well. And now in this box right here, this is just simply going to contain our uh, power supply. It's just USB, so power supply, pretty basic. I think that's micro USB. That's what it's called, mini USB. Pretty sure it's micro USB though. Uh, I always get those confused, pretty sure it's micro. Anyway, we'll set this one to the side as well. So now we could follow a guide online, but we've done this before. We know what we're doing. So actually all we need to do is come over and take out our handy dandy heat sinks here. And we're gonna move this over to the middle here. Hopefully you guys can see this okay with this camera. Two heat sinks, one goes here, one goes there. So these actually just have a little sticky on the bottom here that we just need to peel off. 
It's gonna stick right there to it. So as you guys can see, there are no fans on this thing. So we have to have these little heat sinks on there so that we can help keep this thing as cool as possible. Now, you don't normally put it under a, a ton of load that would uh, require fans. That's not what these are built for. They're built for, you know, very kind of small tasks, if you will, nothing too crazy. Um, but yeah, you definitely don't want to make it too hot because you know, definitely have more of a possibility of frying this thing up for sure. So we're gonna go ahead and stick this. We took the sticky off. We're gonna put this right on our processor here. Be very, very gentle, guiding it. Just wanna be careful. Always wanna be careful. Better safe than sorry, and it just sticks right on there. So we're gonna do the same thing with this, uh, this little heat sink right here. All right, so then we're just gonna stick the next Heat sink right on here. Pa Pow, good to go. Get the little piece out of there. All right. Next thing we need to do is actually stick it inside of this case. So the case, again, it comes apart even a third time. So we'll break that apart, not break it. Preferably, we don't wanna break it because that would be bad. Pops right out there. So this is actually just gonna sit uh, right inside of this bottom part of the case, right? Now, and we need to make sure that we line this up properly. So this side right here actually has your micro USB port and here's the slot for it. So we know that they kind of line up there. So it literally just pops right into place here. There we go. Then, oh, that doesn't match. Then all we gotta do is take the next piece and put it right on top there. Again, snaps right in. Then the top snaps right on if we do it properly. There we go. Now all we need to do is plug in our micro SD card. That's this fancy little thing right there. Oh, are we gonna focus? Probably not. This will contain our operating system. So this just plugs in right here and it goes this way and just pushes right in. Very, very simple to do. So this is literally all you have to do to set up a Raspberry Pi. Now it is good to go. We can actually plug this thing in and power it on. All right, so we wheeled in my cart over here and we have all of the connectors we need. We have our power cable plugged in, we have our HDMI, we have our keyboard, and then we have a USB dongle for the mouse. So we're just gonna start by actually plugging in all of the peripherals first. So mouse, keyboard, HDMI, now we can go with the power. As Soon as we plug this thing in, it's gonna turn on. So I typically wait to plug in the power last. So here we go. Plugged in, we have a blinking light. That's a good thing. So now we'll see what comes up on the screen. So here we go, we're going through our boot up process right now after plugging it in. So that's a great sign that things are going fine. Nothing's catching on fire yet. We have a display. Let's see what happens next. And here we are at our desktop for Kali Linux. I should have mentioned this earlier in the video, the SD card that I plugged in there was pre-configured uh, for Kali Linux. So you guys, this is great to know, can configure as many SD cards as you want for these Raspberry Pis, meaning you can have multiple operating systems installed on individual SD cards with con you know, specific configurations, and all you have to do is plug and play. Pop the SD card out, put in a new one, and that could load in a completely different operating system. So that's something really cool to note. And SD cards are really cheap. So you can switch to any operating system very easily. We have our Kali box up here and running. And the next thing we need to do is plug in our Wi-Fi card. We won't do that in this video. That's really simple to do. Uh, installation process would vary based on the operating system, but this will support any type of external, uh, like USB Wi-Fi uh, device. So make sure you have one of those available. Otherwise, make sure you have your trusty Cat5, Cat6, Cat7 even cable available, ready for you to plug in so that you can have the internets. Now again, this was just a simple walkthrough of setting up a Raspberry Pi for the first time. Plugging and playing, you can purchase a pre-configured SD card uh, directly from some of the websites that you can purchase a Raspberry Pi from, so make sure you guys take note of that. Otherwise, you would have to have an SD card available, uh, whether you purchased that you know, third party or not, 
and you would have to install the operating system from there. We can go through an entire video of setting up an operating system on a Raspberry Pi if that's something that you'd like to see. Otherwise, what types of projects do you guys want to see with these? And what have you done? I hope this video is helpful in kind of breaking down a uh, Raspberry Pi in a very, very simple form because anybody can do this and anybody could take advantage of this as a secondary computer. It does take HDMI, so you can plug it directly into your TV if you don't have a spare monitor available. Again, you could do so many different things with these and we'll provide a list below in the comments, uh, in the description, so you guys can kind of look through all the different projects that are available for these. I like to utilize these for vir different virtual machines. I do a lot of Python scripting from these because it's very simple, again, to switch out SD cards and very easy to back things up. That's primarily why I do it. I don't do a ton of pr like crazy projects with these, but if there's something you guys want to see, make sure you throw it in the comments below. Hope you guys found this video useful. If there's more that you want to see, make sure you throw that in the comments below as well. As always, thank you to NextGenT for sponsoring this video. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you like and subscribe and all that fun stuff that YouTubers are supposed to say. Anyway, as always, take it easy.